Okay. Hi everybody. This is just a uh, quick video to show you some of what we've been doing in maths in the last few weeks. So if anybody's out, uh, you can catch up. Um, I know you can see my screen at the moment, which doesn't look very interesting, but what we talked about uh, this week and last week was about the history of the numbers and where they came from. And I will send you a link to uh, this video here which talks about how we started to use measurement and number. Um, and it was the Egyptians actually who settled on the Nile and started to farm uh, the land around the Nile, um, who gave us one of our first number systems. And the picture that you can see here, and it's as you can see, it's six minutes into the video. That's all I want you to watch, just the first six minutes, um, shows the Egyptian number system. It's quite complicated, uh, you can see, they used this kind of stroke um, symbol for one. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there. They used this uh, heel bone symbol for tens. So again, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got nine of those. So that's nine tens, which is 90. So you've got 90 plus nine is 99. They used this coil of rope as their symbol for 100 and you've got nine of those so that's 900 100 200 300 400 500 600 700 800 900 and so on okay so um this number that's written here with all of these symbols is 999,999 uh, so you can imagine it would take a long time to write that kind of number um they used specific symbols, but they didn't have a place value like we do in the decimal system now. So 54 symbols altogether there to write 999,999. Uh, so that's one example. We also looked, bear with me while I scroll around a little bit here. I'm just gonna uh, go back here to, where's my Roman? I have uh, Roman numerals here somewhere. Here we go, that's one of them. Um, that's, that's one. A graphic for Roman numerals, but I have a better one here in Word, so bear with me. As usual, I have far too much stuff open. Okay, here we are. So these are Roman numerals, and you'll see Roman numerals used um, in a couple of places. Uh, we see them in Word documents. You see them used for the date on, um, certainly on some BBC programs. At the end of it, you'll see a string of letters come up, and it's actually the date. Um, and this was quite a complicated system as well. They used an I for number one, two I's was number two, three I's was number three. And then they decided that five was V. And if there was an I before V, that means one less than five. I V is one less than five, which is four. Uh, and they continued on with that kind of system. So five plus an I was six, seven plus two I's was five plus two is uh, seven, uh, sorry, five plus two i's was seven, five plus three i's was eight. And then again, they decided that x was 10. So an i less than 10 or a one less than 10 is nine. Uh, two x's were 20, two tens are 20, that makes sense. Three x's were 30, but then you get 40 and you can see it's xl. So the l was 50, so x, before 50, 10 before 50 is 10 less than 50, which is 40. So this wasn't a straightforward numbering system either. And a couple of other things that I wanted to point out about it. You can see the number 88. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's eight digits to make up the number 88. And yet 100 only has one. Okay, so it's kind of hard to follow the sequence there. And um, so again, Roman system, um, quite sophisticated, but a little bit difficult to follow. And it also is missing a key component of the number system that we use today. The number system that we use today is decimal. It's based on nine numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we change the value of those depending on where we put them. The Roman numeral system did not have a zero and neither did the ancient Egyptian system. Neither of them had zeros and zeros became very important. So just wanted to point that out to you. Uh, so the module that we're looking at um, this term and next term is pattern. 
and relationship. And you can see some patterns in terms of the way the numbers are ordered and managed here in the Roman system. You could also see them in the video. Um, they used patterns for different types of numbers and then they built up the patterns to build up their numbers, okay? Uh, our number system is slightly different and we'll come back to that, but I'm just pointing out the patterns that you see in ancient number systems. So the other thing that we spoke about today um, was PJ asked a question about um, what is 75% of 112? So that led us into a discussion about um, number lines and equivalent number lines. Okay, so let me go to the pictures that I took of the board today. Um, they're in here. And hopefully you can see this, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so PJ's question is, what is 75% of 112? Okay, now, he knew that 75% was three quarters. So, how did he know that? Well, if we have a number line here from zero to one, okay, and we break it up into four pieces, each of the four pieces, here's the first one, one, two, three, four, each of them are quarters. And actually, if we break, break it up into just two pieces once, we have two halves. So there's zero, a half, and one. And then when we break our halves into uh, two pieces each, we create quarters. And we have one quarter, and then we have two quarters, which happens to be the same as a half, then we have three quarters, and then we have one. Now, if we do a similar number line below in red here, and we start with zero up to one or a hundred percent, okay? And we break it in half, we get 50%. Two fifties are a hundred, so this is 50%. And if we break our 50% up into two pieces, okay? Two 25s are 50, so this is 25%. If we add another 25% to here, we get 50%. And then we add another 25%, we get 75%. And when we add the last 25%, we get up to 100%. That's four 25%. That's the same thing as saying 100% divided in four gives you four 25%. But anything divided in four, we also know is a quarter. So a quarter is the same thing as 25%. A half or two quarters is the same thing as 50%. And three quarters is the same thing as 75%. So that's how PJ knew that 75% was the same thing as three quarters. We can also draw a third number line up here, zero to one again. And now we're just going to divide it in half. And we know half of something is 0 0.5. Half of a euro is 50 cent. There you go, 0 0.5. Okay. Half of 50 cent is 25 cent or 0 0.25 euros. So there's your 25%. And if you add 25 cent on to 50 cent, you get 75 cent or 0.75 euros. So 0.75 of something is the same as three quarters, is the same as 75%. 0.5 or 0.50 of something is the same as a half or 50%. 0.25 of something is the same as a quarter or 25%. And you'll notice a little, an interesting little pattern emerging here. 0.25 is the same as 25%. So you have 2 and 5 and 2 and 5, okay? 0.5 is the same as 50%. Again, you have the 5, 0 and the 5, 0. And 0.75 is the same as 75%. 7, 75 and 75, okay? Because a percentage is just the decimal equivalent multiplied by 100. So 0.75 multiplied by 100 will give you 75. So you can very easily convert a decimal number into a percentage. You just multiply by 100. Or you can convert a percentage to a decimal by dividing it by 100. The numbers stay the same. And that's the thing I want you to notice. 75, 0.75, 50%, 0 0.50. 25%, 0.25, okay? The numbers stay the same. We just change the positions and we add a percentage symbol if that's what we're doing. We'll come back to this. I don't want you to get too worried about that just yet, okay? 
So um, we did this sum, okay, and you can see it here at the moment because I didn't take a picture of the full board. I was just interested in the uh, number lines. But as we said already, 75% of something is the same as three quarters, okay? So let me just move that back up, sorry. If we take 112 as our whole amount and we want to know what three quarters is, the first thing that we'll do is we'll divide it by four, the number on the bottom, to see what one quarter is. And we did 112 divided by four. You can do that on the calculator. 112 divided by four, you get 28. So that gave us one quarter. So to figure out what three quarters is, you just multiply by the number on top, which is three. 28 multiplied by three is 84. So 84 euros is three quarters or 75% of 112. Okay, excuse the sniffling guys, sorry. Okay, and then just one other thing to show you today. Uh, we did a second equivalent number line and we broke our three number lines into 10 bits each. Okay, so we started with zero to one and we divided it in half first. Okay, and then we divided each half into five separate bits. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bits all together. Each of those ten bits is one tenth. So here's one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, which is the same as a half, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and one, or ten tenths. And just like we did on the previous one, we have our percentage one down here. So we, again, we broke our line, our zero to one into 10 even pieces. They're all supposed to be even. Okay, we break it in half. First of all, we know half is 50%. So 50% is the same as the half is the same as five tenths. And then we broke each half into five bits each to give us 10 bits all together. If you divide 50 by five, you'll get 10. Here's 10%, 20, 30, 40. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90%, and then you have 100% down here, okay? Um, again, our decimal number line up here, uh, we took a half, 0.5 is a half, okay? They all line up. And if you divide one by 10, so we've divided each of our lines by 10, if you divide one by 10, you will get 0.1. So each of these 10 bits is 0 0.1, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, you get 2, 1. Okay, so again, look at the, the uh, similarity between the decimal number line and the percentage number line. Okay, 90%, for example, is 0 0.9. 0 0.8 is 80%. 0.7 is 70%. So you see that same relationship again. You see that 0.7 as a decimal is the same thing as 70% as a percentage. You just multiply the decimal by 100. Or if you're told something is 70% and you want to know what the decimal value is, you just divide 70% by 100 and you get 0.7. We'll come back to this, guys. This is just to show you that all of these patterns and relationships exist in the very simple maths that we do. And it will help you to understand fractions, percentages and decimals. OK, uh, so that's just a bit of background for anyone who wasn't in the class today. So I will leave it at that and I will hopefully see everyone next week. OK, thanks, guys.